Um, so I'm here to talk to you about mobility. First of all, let me take the most basic notion of mobility. So mobility is about motion, it's about movement, it's about going from point A to point B, following a given path. My point B in life, as you can see in this picture, has always been becoming an astronaut. Ever since I can remember, my goal in life has been going to the outer space and being all the best that I could be, being like a national hero. A and along the way, I did most of what an astronaut should do. So I tried to be all I could, the best that I could be in school. I became an aerospace engineer. I took a master's in astrophysics. I studied abroad in France and the United States. But eventually, going from point A to point B doesn't always follow a, a straight trajectory. So for a number of reasons, I had to come back to Portugal. And in a way, I felt frustrated. In a way, I, had, I, I thought I had to revise my dreams and see what to make of my life. And in Portugal, I came to another scale of thought. I stopped thinking about going to the unknown, to the, to the physical frontiers of, of what we know, but to the, to the local uh, mental barriers that we face in the world that we have today, and that is actually killing us. So mobility is all about everyday people's lives. Okay? So mobility, normal, and we've seen, we've seen with Katarina's presentation, Mobility, we associate normally with cars. Okay, so, we, cars, and uh, due to the great, this great genius that Henry Ford was, with the democrat democratization of, of cars, uh, with, with this car, one car for everyone uh, lemma, Ford actually brought us a lot of problems. So, if you take a look to the 20th century, of course, the growth of your population was amazing people started displacing to, to streets, to, to, to cities, and, and everything seemed to, to be going really well, economic growth, cheap energy, everything was amazing. But suddenly, we are faced with cities that are no longer uh, created for, for, for the individual, for the citizens, but cities that are created for cars, for vehicles. It's all about infrastructure. It's about physical things that take us from point A to point B, and it's not really about living uh, and our existence as individuals. So, in, like uh, Norberto was saying, every day we spend like three hours here in Portugal in traffic. If you go to places like uh, Beijing or, or so, you lose like six or seven hours. It's a fact that, for instance, for a country like Portugal, uh, in terms of productivity, Traffic congestion actually accounts for 2% of the GDP. Uh, another major issue when you have so many cars are road accidents. Actually, road accidents are the, the, the biggest cause for uh, death in the world for people below the age of, of 25. So you can see it's a, it's a really, really uh, bad problem. And of course, and this is mostly related to the, to the, to the work I, that I do, there is a sustainability issue. There's the, the issue of depletion of resources, there's the issue of pressure on the environment, of, of, of energy, of emissions, of pollution, of noise, and these problems clearly, we, we clearly will not be able to be living with these problems in the future. So what are the solutions that we, we are looking for nowadays to tackle these problems? What are the solutions that actually uh, work on? One of, one of the, the, the great things that we are now uh, studying and, and trying to implement in pilot projects all around the world is, is the question about sharing. Uh, Katerina presented uh, great examples on sharing, on collaborative experience, or p on peer-to-peer -peer experiences. But actually, care-sharing experience that we now have in cities like Amsterdam or um, London with bike sharing, and uh, all, actually all around the world, we, we've seen great results. So, uh, most of you wouldn't know, but actually in cities where people are actually using car sharing schemes, you see that drivers have reduced by 80% the amount of time they spend driving. So, all the other 80% of time they, they, they are doing something else. They, they are not using their cars, they are taking their bikes, they are walking around, they are enjoying life. Of course, there's also the, the, the question of efficiency, 
and I, I, I'm a lover for electric vehicles, and this is actually where I, where I began my work in. And actually, one of the best things about Ford is that when Ford began, began his, 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 uh, his great invention for mass production, actually the winners at the time were electric vehicles. Most of you wouldn't know, but the first uh, individual vehicles, as cars as we know them, were electric. Actually, until the, maybe the, 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 the second decade of the, of the 20th century, uh, most of the car companies in the world were producing electric vehicles. But that guy had to mass produce an internal combustion engine based vehicle. So, with cheap energy, growing economies, oil, so we got into, in, into that. So, nowadays we are creating smart electric vehicles, electric vehicles that can, can get their energy from our homes and you don't have to go to. to, to, to to gas pumps, electric vehicles that consume the energy that we as a country are producing, and with all the, the rains that we've been having in the, in the, last, uh, in the last month, uh, most or almost all of the energy to, that we were producing in Portugal was 100% renewables. So think about not having to import all that oil from, from outside of the world. So, but with these electric vehicles, it comes a lot of intelligence as well. We work with projects where we have vehicles communicating with vehicles, vehicles communicating with, with drivers, vehicles knowing who the drivers are and adapting the inside to, to, to their profiles, to their needs, to their desires, to their wants. Vehicles that communicate in infrastructure and in real time are constantly getting information and, and making us uh, try to, to, to integrate all that information to creating new business models, more rational usage of of vehicles and of how we move. So this is basically the arena where I work in, making things smarter, like uh, smarter vehicles, smarter houses, smarter appliances. So right now the train is making everything smarter. But let's take a look at mobility and how we actually move. So all of the 100,000 people that we have here, you had to come here somehow. So some of you walked here, some of you took a bike, some of you took a car, but the fact is most of you just came here the way you, all, you, you always do. So we as people, we are creatures of habit. So we can have a, a lot of information, we, we can know everything about our car, how we use its impact, but the fact is that almost half of the decisions that we take are unconscious. So, Maybe when I'm working in, in making things smarter and appealing to the rational side of people, maybe what we should actually be doing is tackling the emotional side of people, the primitive inside and the animal creature that lies inside. So, so let's take a look at people like animals. And this is the experience that we want to be trying in the, in the very near future. So animals constantly compete for everything. Okay? So that's our most basic uh, instinct of survival. And, and to do that, we compete. So our idea is let's create a game, a game like an arena for competition we are, where we are actually, all of us, competing to be more sustainable. Okay, so this is really, I know this is really nice, and why should we try to be more sustainable? The fact is, we can actually give, if we empower the people to, to try to achieve this, we will want to be more sustainable than our neighbor, more, we want to be our family to be more, more sustainable, we want to, to be living in, in cities that are actually more sustainable, and we want to be creating like uh, competitions for the best city, but not like in a ranking where you see once in a while or every five years, but like every single day of your life. It's like having, we now have in football, and this is like the, the competition that we are used to dealing, you see Barca against Madrid, we see uh, Porto team against Lisbon team, and so we, we actually see competition factors that we are not creating for anything more productive. So and how do we make people actually uh, play this game? This is the challenge that, 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 we, that we are facing. So for people to play the game, you have to give 
people the tools they need. Okay, so you, get, you have to give them the jersey, you have to give them the boots, you have to give them the ball. Okay, so following my, my, my first argument, it's all about getting people smarter. Okay, but it, it's about knowing how to, to, to make people understand what's around them. It's about understanding that we are limited in our perception of, 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 of the outside world and we don't have the capability to process all that's around us. So, what you're actually creating is a new me. Okay, so something like this that I have here, something that within the spirit of, of TEDx today, I hope will be more fused with, with my body, but it's actually something that fulfills three uh, very simple uh, properties. It's something that identifies myself. It's something that knows who I am and knows what's around me. It's something that is able to censor my environment. It's, it's something that is able to measure. It's something that measures the energy that I consume whenever I uh, take a given uh, uh, means of transportation, whether I walk, whether I take my bike, my electric bike, whether I take my car, the electric car, or my car-sharing electric car, whatever. It's something that just knows what I'm interacting with. And finally, it's also something that is able to communicate. But it's, it's able to communicate in two ways. It's able to communicate with my community, with, with the city that's around me. It's able to convey all the information that my fellow uh, teammates need to know that together we are building up to something. But it's also something that communicates with my primitive insight. So it's something that connects with those five senses that we have, and not by numbers or images that we then have to process. It's something that our most basic uh, person really understands. So what, in the end, what we are actually creating uh, with this new me, it's something that is who I am. It's something that knows what I feel, it's something that lives from me. So its energy comes from my energy. And in, in, in this travel, in, in this, this better knowledge of ourselves and how we, we interact with machines and how machines can make us better understand what's around us and, uh, and the decisions we take and why we take the decision that we do, I believe that we can contribute for, for a better world. And honestly, when I hopefully get back on my path for uh, becoming an astronaut, and when I take my ship and I head up to the, to the Earth orbit or go to the moon or even Mars, I just hope that when I leave and when I look back down, I'm looking to, 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 to my planet, a blue planet, where I have what we call smart cities. Smart cities that not only have smart technology and things, but smart cities that they have smarter people. So people that embrace their true nature and that can be more sustainable and will keep on, keep on living in this beautiful planet and, and taking care of it. So thank you very much.